And before we even pray, uh, you know, we send out that link every month to remember to bless the water at uh, 7 o'clock on the 7th of every month. And uh, that's more important than ever. And uh, so right now, we'll uh, even before we settle in and do prayer, we're going to bless the water. And uh, it's 7 o'clock over California time on the West Coast, so we'll be joining <laughs> with our brothers and sisters. And it doesn't really matter if it's 7 a.m. or 7 p.m. If you do it on the hour, it's 7 a.m., 7 p.m. somewhere. So what we're trying to do is, uh, you know, get all that energy going and then really... Uh, exponentially bless the Lord water. So let us uh, just uh, take a deep breath and center our consciousness. And we're giving thanks for um, the beautiful painted arrow, uh, Chief Joseph Rael, for that water blessing and for starting a global movement to uh, bless the water. And so let us know as we, uh, with the divinity within us, we have a little water in our hand that this represents all the water on the earth, all the water on the earth is connected. All the streams, all the rivers, all the lakes, all the oceans, they're all connected. And so we're asking for the divine beings, the avatars, the uh, archangels, to really help us with purifying and blessing the water so that it really nourishes us when we take it in. And uh, to bring to our awareness uh, all our guardian angels to bring to our awareness to take good care of it as a resource. To, to use what we need, but to not to keep it running, and uh, to reuse the kind of the water when we can reuse it. And so we see the water throughout the earth being purified and cleansed, and for this we give thanks. In the name and through the power of the Jesus Christ teachings, Amen. Amen. So, uh, and that's what we, uh, you know, Joseph Rael, we send out the YouTube uh, every month. You can listen to his water blessing, but that's what we would like you to do. Uh, you can do it every day, not just the 7th, but at least if everybody remembers on the 7th, then we have a, a good group of people around the globe doing it. That's a good thing. So welcome. My name is Reverend March Brown, and I'm senior minister here at Unity of the Villages. And we have a very joyous, joy-filled congregation. So you will we'll see that. And we have a special guest today. Will Tuttle, and Will Tuttle has, and his wife Madeline have been uh, traveling and doing this work for over two decades. So we have um, specialness with us today. So let us uh, take a moment and pray together. <clears throat> let us uh, join in consciousness. And remember why we're here. We're here to remember who we are on the planet. We're here to remind each other of the divine spirits that we are, the God particles, the God sparks that we are on earth. And so we know with any kind of changes that we want to see in the world, we have to ask ourselves, well, what am I going to do? What am I going to do to help? And so we are God's eyes and ears and voices and hearts and souls. And so with that consciousness, we uh, pray for all our world leaders. We pray for their divine guidance, their wisdom, their compassionate decisions, and their uh, ability to see long-term how the decisions that are made today affect generations. We pray for all the children of the world. May they have all their needs taken care of. And may they have the potential to reach their dreams. And we continue to pray for peace in the world and to know that it permeates the globe and that as we hold the consciousness for peace, we make that happen. And we bless all the uh, African Americans, especially this month as we celebrate Black History Month. We give thanks for all that labor that has made the United States it has laid the foundation for what it is today. And so for wherever you are on your spiritual path, we welcome you. And we uh, know that you'll be uplifted by just something that somebody says in the community room and fellowship after the service, some words in a prayer or in the music or in the message. 
And so we thank you for being here. Amen.
piece of original music called Bursting Light. to join us this morning. Unity of the Villages is our spiritual home where we know, love, and serve God through our Sunday celebrations, our friends, our family, and our community. We appreciate the talents of our music team, Donna, Hector, and our special guest today, Will Tuttle. and sing our joy song. The words will be on the screen. Morning, everyone. <laughs>
have not received this welcome packet? If so, would you please raise your hand? Perfect. <coughs> if you're visiting for the first time, we appreciate you wearing your name badge, as you see many of us do. We'd like to get to know you on a first name basis. If you have ordered a name badge, you'll notice that it's on the back wall filed by your first name. If you are new or have been coming for a while and not signed up for our weekly e-newsletter, just fill out this card and place it in our offering basket. If you are visiting for the first time, would you please raise your hand? We have a gentleman up on both sides. We would like to give you a blessing, so let's all affirm this blessing together. We love you, we bless you, we appreciate you, and we behold the Christ in you. You're never alone on the road of life, and you're certainly not alone here at Unity of the Villages. I always have to look and see what she's put up there. <laughs> it's time for our community greeting, so after a couple of minutes, just please be seated. Go. <laughs> There'll be a love offering. 
I have some bio notes on Mr. Will Tuttle, or I should say Dr. Will Tuttle. He is a composer, pianist, educator, and author of the best-selling book, The World Peace Diet. He is devoted to uplifting and healing original music and to helping people awaken their inner wisdom and genius. He's presented lectures, concerts, and workshops throughout North America and worldwide. He has a PhD in education from the University of California at Berkeley, focusing on education intuition. He's taught classes and courses in philosophy, humanity, mythology, creativity, and comparative religion. He's a Zen priest and Dharma master in the Korean Zen tradition. Mr. Dr. I should say, sorry, Dr. Will Tuttle is currently conducting a music, art, and education ministry and his wife Madeline as a visionary artist from Switzerland. They are traveling and providing lectures, concerts, and workshops as hundreds of progressive ministries at Unity Village, inspiring art prints, you can see some of them here, cards and books, as well as CDs of original piano music. Pers individual lessons, <coughs> excuse me, individual sessions for personalized music and art portraits are available. Some reminders of our new thought activities this week. Tuesday at 7 p.m. is our crystal bowl meditation. Join Marsha McAllister in a guided meditation using the crystal bowls to help get you to that quiet, still place. Everyone is welcome and there will be a love offering. Tuesday at uh, 8.30 a.m. is the board meeting on the PSH, our permanent spiritual home. This coming Saturday from 9.30 to 3.30 is strategic planning for our church for next year. I hope to see all of you there. Next Sunday is Legacy Introduction. This will begin at 11.45. Here you can meet the attorney that will be facilitating a workshop on Sunday, March 14th, where she will give you an estate management presentation and will answer all of your questions. So that's a very important function to come to. Jim Rosick will say a few words, then Mary Togus will, Togus will speak, and then our prayer chaplain, Kate Gordon, one of them, will read the daily word and the power of the month and bless our prayer box. And lastly, Go Broncos. <laughs> Good morning. I'm Jim Rosak and my wife Carol uh, are, are very pleased to just introduce the subject of legacy planning. Reverend Marge and John Booth asked if I would help in, in presenting uh, some thoughts on legacy planning. You know, at our age, we get some curveballs that you never do anticipate. Isn't that right? I mean, more so than any other time in our life. And uh, that's why it is so important to continually review and update our legacy plans. Uh, this past summer, uh, my Carol's brother uh, passed away uh, from ALS. And he was a very sweet soul, and he uh, very close to Carol. And he um, wanted that transition uh, to be as smooth as possible. And uh, he lived about 10 miles uh, uh, from Washington State in Oregon. And uh, he went to an attorney in Washington who prepared his will under Washington law. And uh, that will basically would have relieved uh, Carol as her, his personal representative uh, of having to go through probate. Well, he died in Oregon. And Oregon law took precedent, and his will was null and void. And that, that caused a very, very difficult uh, set of decisions for Carol, uh, who really couldn't uh, serve as that representative because of, because of the difference in legal issues and because of very serious complexities with, with probate. So that, that was a, a real eye-opener, slap in the head uh, 
a moment for, for both of us uh, to review our legacy, our will, and what we really wish to leave, not, not just to our, our, our children and grandchildren, but to the, the uh, institutions that are most important to us, uh, such as Unity and, and, and uh, other charities. So uh, things change, things change quickly, they change so quickly in our life, and, um, and next week will be a very important introduction uh, and a very important thing that Unity is doing for all of us in, in, in helping us stay with and prepare and be up to date on, uh, on, on our, what we want to leave for uh, is, is our legacy. Thank you for the time. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Now, Dee and her team have been really busy selling tickets for the um, uh, raffle. I'm not here to do that. I'm not going to sell you any tickets, but I do need your help. We need help before and after for setup and cleanup. We have 45 tables that need tablecloths and centerpieces. We need help setting up the prizes, the food, the desserts, the drinks. The kicker is, we only have an hour to do this. That's one hour and approximately a half, 30 minutes per table. Oh, um, excuse me, one minute and 30 seconds per table. Okay, that's a lot to get on the tablecloth, to get the centerpieces on, to get everything else up. So, I ask if you are planning on coming to the event, and I know a lot of you are, if you could plan on coming an hour earlier and help set up, or if you can't come that hour earlier, stay an hour later and help clean up, it would be much appreciated. Um, if you're not planning on attending for some reason, this is your chance to get involved and to kind of be a part of the event, so I also ask you for that. We have a sign-up sheet that will be in the community room for the various areas that need help. If you would please put your name and a phone number so we can contact you. This way, a lot of us doing a little bit, we get it done and we'll have a very successful event. So I thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Kay Good, for those of you who don't know who I am. And I'm the print chaplain for today. Today's reading is from the Daily Word, which is published by Unity, and you can get the book either in the um, community room or online. Today's reading is Pet Blessing, and it's from Job 12, 7. But ask the animals, and they will teach you, the birds of the air, and they will tell you. Pets love us no matter what we do or don't do. Animal friends don't judge whether humans are worthy, nor do they withhold their love. They simply love us for being. Through their unconditional love, we're experiencing the healing power of God. The calm I feel when I pet an animal, or the joy of watching animals at play, brings me a sense of wholeness. Animals nurture the spiritual qualities of peace and happiness in me. They are living examples for how to trust the body's intrinsic rhythm. They instinctively know when to rest, play, stretch, and exercise. The greatest instinct of all is their love with open-hearted loyalty. Today, I thank pets and animals for bringing healing love to me and to all of humanity. And would you repeat the affirmation that's up there on the board? I am grateful for the healing love of pets. The spiritual power of the month is imagination. The corresponding color is light blue. The center of imagination is located between the eyes. Imagination is the ability to image, picture, conceptualize, envision, dream. Imagination is represented by Anna and the disciple Bethalabu, also known as Nathaniel. 
Anna, according to the Gospel of Luke, was an aged Jewish woman who prophesied about Jesus at the Temple of Jerusalem. Jesus gave the Bartholomew the promise of the spiritual development of imagination. You shall see greater things than these. Please join me in saying the affirmation. I envision good unfolding in every area of my life. And now we'll bless, bless the prayer. Let us all focus our attention up here, opening up our hearts and our minds and shining that light that is within each one of us up here in all of these names in the prayer box. Knowing that the Holy Spirit is manifesting its healing presence as we speak in their bodies, freeing them from all disease, and in their minds, freeing them from all the fears, and in their souls, bringing them a peace, a comfort, and a joy, knowing that the Holy Spirit is within them at all times, awakening them and helping them to realize that they are a part of all that is. And as they walk forward in this journey called life, knowing that the Holy Spirit is walking with them, guiding them, showing them the way, we give thanks for this knowledge, this wisdom, and this healing. Thank you. Thank you, God, and so it is. Amen. Now, with the prayer chaplains that are in service today, please stand. Okay. So these are the prayer chaplains that are here today that will pray with you if you want prayer after the service. Thank you. Yeah, and uh, kind of switched uh, the powers around a little bit. Uh, we're going to keep with imagination this month. Uh, the people who took a 12 powers class uh, know it makes more sense to keep with that chakra. So it's in the middle of your head, faith and imagination go together, and then we'll do will and understanding. So the power of this month that we're going to study is imagination. Well, truth touched my life in a whole bunch of ways. And 